Hey everyone, today we'll be installing the cast iron tub in the bathroom. Stay tuned. Okay, so we've already gone over how to get the tub to the bathroom. Let's talk about how we're going to get it into the bathroom and against that back wall. So obviously what we would normally do is take the tub in through the doorway standing up and then we'd have to figure out a way to jockey it into position against that back wall back there. Uh, one of the things to think about though is that this is a cast iron tub. So the weight of that tub when we're trying to jockey it down into position is going to be very difficult to deal with and it's going to hit against the studs quite a bit. You're going to have to figure out how to overcome that. If you're in the midst of a major remodel and you've got your walls to where there's no wall board up, one thing you may want to think about doing is taking out some wall studs and that will allow you to slide the tub in and then push it against the back wall. And then of course you just put the studs back up. One thing to consider would be to get the tub to where the apron is between these studs here so that when it comes down and you try to lay it close to the floor, it's still going to hit the studs, but the apron itself will be in this area here, which will allow the tub to come a little bit closer to the floor. And then you'd have to kind of jockey it to where you get it flat down on the floor and against the back wall. A couple obstacles to think about are the shower valve back there. You can see how that sticks out and gets in our way. Uh, since our bathroom is 60 inches wide and our tub is the same width, I think the bathroom actually is about 60 and a quarter. Uh, so we've got very little wiggle room back there. That tub spout most likely is going to have to come out before I try to install the tub in here too. We've also got the toilet supply line down there to think about too. So now having said all of that, let's talk about what I'm actually going to do here. So let's come over to this wall here and as you remember, I put up a wall stud there and put up some wall board to close off this doorway. So what I'm going to actually do is take down the wall board here take the stud down and then we're going to slide the tub in this way and push it against the back wall. At least that's the plan. I never mudded and taped that drywall because I thought there would be an issue installing the tub and that would be my last resort to get the tub in here. And that's one of the reasons why I raised the height of the dolly so I could overcome this toilet shutoff over here. So we'll see how that works out. So let's cover just a few last points here and one of those is how we're going to best get the tub nice and level. Now, with regard to a cast iron tub, there's a lot of controversy out there as to how to best get the tub nice and level. A lot of the manufacturer's instructions say to not use what's called a ledger board. And so a ledger board sits on your back wall here, and it sits right under the lip of the tub. So a lot of manufacturers don't recommend doing that because there's a potential for the enamel of the tub to crack over time with the weight of people getting in and out of the tub and the water in the tub. If you decide to go ahead and use a ledger board or the type of tub you're installing and calls for the use of a ledger board, then something like a 1x4 piece of oak would work really well. So what you would do is measure it from the floor to the underside of your the lip of your tub and then you would transfer that height to this wall and this would be the top of where your tub would sit and you want to make sure this is nice and level and then put a couple screws through the ledger board and into the wall studs and I would make sure those screws are at least two inches to two and a half inches long so use your own discretion there and you may want to refer to the manufacturer's instructions and follow those instructions the manufacturer's instructions for the tub I'm installing say to shim the feet so that's what I'm going to do here so what I've done here is marked out the feet locations on the floor the feet actually are only about an inch and a half by about three quarters of an inch in size. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these junction box covers. I saw this as a suggestion online. I thought that was a great idea. So I can shim the feet and not have to be so exacting. So what I've done here is I put one shim down on the floor and duct taped it to the floor. And I'm going to do that at all four locations. I'm going to start with the base of one shim, regardless of whether the tub needs to be shimmed in order to get it nice and level. The reason I'm doing that is because I want to make sure the feet don't compress into the floor over time since they're so narrow. Okay, so one thing I wanted to show you real quick was removing this pipe here. Uh, we're talking about 40 year old pipes so there's a lot of buildup in there. I looked around online and one tip that somebody had was to use candle wax 
uh, melt that in this joint here to get it to turn. And I remember using candle wax when I was removing exhaust parts on a car. That worked really well. So what I did was I used this pick tool and just kind of scraped around the joint to get all the crud off. And then I took this Map Pro torch here, heated up the pipe in short bursts because I didn't want to destroy the valve here. And then I melted the candle wax on this joint. So I've got two pipe wrenches, one here to hold this steady. Second one I put on here, cinched that down, and then I pulled in opposite directions. Now that didn't work very well because this pipe wrench is pretty short. So I had to actually grab a sledgehammer and finally got it to turn. So that took quite a bit of time, but it finally came off. Okay, so we've got the tub in the bathroom finally, and it's on its apron. And you can see we have a drop cloth on the floor to protect the apron of the tub. And what we had originally planned on doing was wheeling the tub to the back wall on the dollies, but one of the problems with that is I was worried about trying to get the tub off the dollies and onto the floor and have it come crashing down. So we decided instead to leave the tub on the floor. And what we're going to do is we're going to push the tub as close as we can get it to that shutoff on the left there. And then we're going to drop the tub down over the shutoff to where the shutoff is between the basin and the apron. Okay, so since we're within about a foot of the back wall, I decided to check for level at this point and put in some shims if I needed them. So as you can see, I've got two shims on that back ledge of the tub, and then I've got the level on top of that. That's a four foot level. Here I'm repeating what I'd done with the base shims and I'm duct taping these two shims to the floor. Okay, so here we're preparing to move the tub to the back wall. So what we're doing is putting a couple blocks in under the apron so we can use that apron as leverage to lift it over the toilet shutoff and get this tub to the back wall. Next, we decided to support the tub on a dolly so we could get it over the shutoff. But as you can see, the shutoff was a little too close to the apron, so it got caught on the apron and turned the water on. So we slid the tub about an inch or so towards us, and then we lifted the tub onto the dolly. And you can see we also put another block on top of the dolly just to make sure we cleared the shutoff. We then slid the tub to the back wall by lifting up on the back of the tub and sliding at the same time. And we made sure that our hands were in the stud cavity so they didn't get pinched on the studs. Lastly, we removed the dolly and set the tub down on the floor, and then we just had to push about an inch or two to get it all the way to the back wall. Since we'd used larger shims, this actually worked out beautifully. To shim the front foot on the right-hand side, we just repeated the process of putting a block under the apron so we could give ourselves some leverage, and then we just lifted the tub up off the ground and got our shims in. Now I did not record this part, but you kind of get the gist of what we did here. The shimming actually was a lot easier than I expected. Okay, so as you saw, I did not install the waste and overflow pipe on the tub before I installed the tub. And that is because we have some rats trying to get up the sewer line right now and into the house. I did not realize that I had not capped off the drain line for the tub, so they were able to get into the crawl space. I have one down there at least right now that I can hear. He's making a lot of noise down there. So I have a trap set up and I'm trying to catch him. So I've since capped off that line and I've also covered the hole in the floor so they can't get up into the house. And so what I'm going to do here is just a quick mock-up of how I'm going to be installing this tailpiece here on the drain under the floor since I can't do it live. Okay, so I wanted to point out that I left this out of the last video and that is you need to remove this tailpiece here and then wrap a couple turns of Teflon tape in a clockwise manner around the threads of the tailpiece and then just screw it back in by hand. So 
I left that out and I wanted to make sure that I included that here. Okay, so how you connect up to the plumbing under the floor is going to be determined by the configuration of that plumbing. So if you have a situation where you're actually going to be screwing on to the end of the pipe here, then what you would do is you would put some sort of a thread sealant on here, like a Teflon tape or like a great white pipe joint compound. This one's actually compatible with both metals and plastics. This one here is true blue. I use this more for gas pipe than I actually use it for uh, simple connections like this, but this one is compatible with metals and most plastics. I did not see a mention of ABS on here, so just be careful about which one you choose if you decide to go that route. So how that would work again, you have your sealant on here or Teflon tape. Then you'd have your beveled washer here with the bevel side facing that way. Slide that over the pipe here. I'm going to slide it all the way up like that. And then your slip nut would come up this way. Screw that down, get it nice and tight, and then give it another quarter turn. If your configuration includes something like a trap adapter like I have, then what you would do is wrap some Teflon tape around the threads on here. Or, again, use one of these joint compounds. I'm just going to demonstrate because I'm probably going to use Teflon tape here. So how you would do that is in a clockwise manner. How I like to do this is grab one end of the tape with my finger on my left hand like that and then just kind of wrap this this way then wrap a couple nice tight turns around here then I'd hold it with my thumb here and just break it off and then use your fingers to kind of smooth it out like that so we got that set up so to connect up to this, we're going to use as a slip nut. This one here is an universal. Comes in a package with these two washers here. So you can slide that on like that. Slide your bevel washer on like this with the bevel side facing that way. Slide that up. Your pipe would come down inside that and then you would just screw this down all the way down and then again get it nice and tight and then one quarter turn to finish it off. Now since I bought this trap adapter for demonstration purposes it actually came with this slip nut here. This one has an integrated washer as you can see there. So that's the one I'm actually going to use because the less components I think are better. So I've got this washer here slide it on like that this has got a much tighter feel to it too, as you can see there. And then this will just screw down like that. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like and share the video and subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for future videos. Visit our website at DIYApprentice.com.